Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. You know, lately there's been a lot of people that have been trying to set up their own home theater, and that's just thanks to current world events. So we decided to make a video walking you through the process of determining your budget, picking a room, gathering equipment, and setting everything up. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then stick around and we'll get into it right after the intro. <laughs> Now, if you want to build your own home theater, the first thing you're going to need to do is a little planning. This can be as simple as grabbing a pencil and piece of paper, making a diagram of your room layout so you can figure out where you want your seats, screen or TV, and speakers. This will be a great help in determining what kind of speakers to get, the size of your display, and overall budget. This could be anywhere from a few hundred dollars all the way up to tens of thousands of dollars. Now, if you're the type of person that would rather do your planning in a more interactive way, there are many different pieces of software that can help you model your room, and we'll mention just a couple here. The one that we really like using is the Audio Advice Home Theater Designer, which is a completely free online tool that will let you quickly see how your room would look with any size screen, speaker, seats, and much more. Another program that gives you a lot more flexibility in the design of your room is SketchUp. This is a free, fully featured online CAD software that many people use to design their rooms. The main downside of this software is its steep learning curve. But if you can get past that, it's a great tool you can use to design a very accurate model of what you want your theater to look like. All right, now that we've got a plan, the first thing you're gonna need to do is either get a TV or projector. A TV is of course a great choice if you're in a smaller room and you can live with a display up to 86 inches. This is the route we decided to take for our living room home theater where we have an 85 inch Sony X900H 4K TV that we're currently in the process of reviewing. Now if 86 inches isn't big enough for you, your only other choice would be a projector which can be a little more involved because it has to be mounted correctly and you also have to get some type of projection screen which also adds to the cost and setup. We've actually made a video on how to choose the best projector screen for your setup, so if you decide to go that route, go ahead and check it out. We'll put a link in the description. One thing to consider when choosing between a TV and a projector is that a TV at the same price point will generally have better picture quality than the projector, especially when it comes to HDR content. And now moving on to what we think is one of the most important parts of a home theater, and that's the AV receiver. Now depending on what you ended up with during the planning phase, you should have already decided whether you want a simple 5.1 surround sound system or something more elaborate like a full 7.2.6 Atmos setup. There's a huge range of receiver models based on the type of system you want to build and how much money you want to spend. Higher end receivers will give you more output power, surround sound channels, and a ton of other features that may or may not appeal to you. Whatever you chose, you're going to need a way to take the sound coming from your movies and play them on your speakers, and that's exactly what the AV receiver does. If you want to learn more about some of your options from four of the biggest AV receiver manufacturers on the market, we've put together an in-depth home theater receiver buyer's guide video. In that, we compare the specs and features of various receivers in three different price categories. If you want to check that out, we'll leave a link to that in the description below. Now if you want to go one step beyond an AV receiver, you can always move up to an AV processor. This is essentially a high-end receiver without the internal power amplification. Going this route usually ends up costing more money because of course you need to purchase separate amplifiers as well, but most people tend to agree that you get a better sounding system. We've actually gone with both types of systems. In our living room theater we have a Yamaha 7.1 channel receiver running an SVS 5.1 surround sound setup that we recently did a review on. If you want to check out that video, we'll leave links in the description. In our main home theater, we're running an Integra processor with separate Emotiva and Marantz amplifiers. Now, one thing we do want to mention here is if you're new to home theater, we would suggest getting a receiver with built-in pre-outs. That way, you can use the internal amps for now, and if you ever want to go with separate amplifiers later, you have the option without needing to get a new processor. If you need more information on how to hook up a receiver, check out our Home Theater Receiver Basics video, 
And again, we'll leave links in the description below. Now your next big decision is going to be speakers. This is another area where your pre-planning that you did earlier is going to go a long ways. For example, it'll probably give you a pretty good idea as to whether you can go with full-size tower speakers or if you'll have to limit yourself to smaller bookshelf or satellite speakers. If you are limited to smaller speakers, a couple of recommendations we have are the SVS 5.1 system or another great option would be this RSL CG3 5.1 system that we reviewed on our channel recently. Both sound great and are reasonably priced and we'll leave links to both of those in the description below. If you're able to go with larger speakers, there are literally tons of options available in all price ranges from brands like SVS, Klipsch, Polk Audio, Kef, Martin Logan, and even Vandersteens, which are the speakers we've chosen to go with in our main home theater. Another thing to consider when it comes to choosing speakers is whether or not the manufacturer of your choice makes actual surround and height speakers. For example, as we mentioned, we use Vandersteen tower speakers, which we love, but unfortunately they don't make timber matched height speakers, meaning we have to use a different brand for our Atmos speakers that have a different sound signature. If you want to learn more about different types of speakers and how you can use them in your home theater, go ahead and check out our home theater speakers basics video, link is in the description. Okay, now that you figured out which type of speakers you want to go with, it's time to decide what kind of sub you want to get. There are several different types of subs available, but the most common types are sealed and ported, which are what we recommend if you're just getting started. Both of these types are a great choice for home theater, with a ported sub usually having more output at lower frequency levels, and sealed subs being known for a tighter, faster bass with less output. Of course, this all comes down to personal preference. We've recently reviewed a few different subs from companies like SVS and RSL, including the PB16 Ultra, the much more affordable SB1000, which the review for should be out soon, and the Speedwolfer 10S. These are all great sounding subs, and we'll leave links in the description to all of those reviews. All right, now that you've got everything you need to watch some movies, you're going to need to decide what kind of media you actually want to watch. You can get movies into your home theater in a few different ways, either by using physical media or by streaming it, whether it be from the internet or from a media server in your home. We actually do both types. For our physical media, we use a Sony UBP X800 4K Blu-ray player and either a Roku or an Nvidia Shield for our streaming needs. For local media, we've built our own Plex Media server with about 20 terabytes of storage and we also made a complete build video of it. If you're interested in building one for yourself, we'll leave a link in the description below. This isn't something that's absolutely necessary if you're just getting started, but it is nice to have and it can be added at a later date. Now, one thing that always happens after you've put together a home theater system is you end up with a bunch of remotes that are really hard to manage. For that reason, one thing we highly suggest getting is a universal remote, because once you get all this equipment set up and running, it'll quickly become a chore trying to control everything at once. The remote we chose is the Logitech Harmony Elite, which we use in both our dedicated theater and our living room theater. And of course, if you want to check out our review of the Logitech Harmony Elite Remote, we'll leave a link in the description below. All right, moving on to another very important part of the home theater, and that's seating. This, of course, is all down to personal preference and can be anything from just a normal couch and love seat, like we use in our living room, to high end LED lit home theater seats, like these Valencia Tuscany theater seats. The main thing to remember here is always go for comfort over looks and you should be fine. Another big consideration when building a home theater is acoustic treatment. Too many sound reflections can lower sound quality and the best way to treat your theater for sound reflections is by using acoustic panels. These can be bought online or if you're handy with tools you can build them yourself. In our main home theater we killed two birds with one stone by combining acoustic panels with printed movie posters and we think they turned out great. If you want to see how we built these panels, we'll leave a link to the video in the description below. Now there are some other obvious things you're going to need, like speaker wires. We recommend 14 gauge for short runs and 12 gauge for longer runs. You're also going to need an HDMI cable to go from every component you have 
to your receiver and one to go to whatever type of display you've decided to go with. With all the equipment chosen and set up, all you have to do now is enjoy your home theater. And that's going to bring this video to an end. So we hope you found it enjoyable and informative. If you think we left something out, go ahead and let us know in the comments below. If you like the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. And as always, have an awesome day.